the weather inversion remains strong. Pollution continues to suffocate the town. What made this inversion different was the length of duration. Inversions are not new to the area, but this one lasted for five days. The zinc works keeps running. The death toll continues to rise. News reports spread the story of Denora's strange tragedy. The deadly cloud over Denora, Pennsylvania, but nobody knows what the poisonous vapor is in the smog. There have been a score of deaths. National attention blames the deaths on pollution from the zinc works. Sunday, October 31st, at 6 a.m., the superintendent of the zinc mill bows to public pressure. They did ultimately put in into what's called a dead heat, which is you get it down to the lowest temperature you can without putting any ore in it. So it's still warm, but if you don't give it more fuel, you're not creating more pollution from it. But that decision is not what ultimately saves Denora. Later that morning, a low pressure system and cold front move in from the west. Strong winds from this system allow the atmosphere to begin clearing. The moving air breaks the inversion. By afternoon, the skies over Denora open up and rain showers wash away the remaining toxic smog. The rains were a blessing. Literally, rain cleans the air, and it ended the problem. That week, under clear skies, the town of Denora begins to bury its dead. We lived right on the main road that goes to the cemetery, so they had to pass our house to go and we'd have a funeral procession of maybe 10, 15 cars. And then about an hour or two later, there'd come another one, another 10, 15 cars. The death rate in Denora went from an average of 30 deaths in a year to 20 dead in a single weekend. Deborah Davis is the author of When Smoke Ran Like Water, a story that's not only scientific, but personal. So, Deborah Davis, uh, tell us about what happened in Denora, Pennsylvania in 1948 when you were a girl. Well, when I was a very small child, at the end of October, around the time of Halloween, a massive inversion of cold air settled over the valley, and hot fumes were trapped in a kind of sandwich layer with cold air on the bottom, fumes in the middle, and a layer of cold on top. And they couldn't get out of this area where there were steel mills and coal fire furnaces. And within 12 hours, in one period of 12 hours, 18 people dropped dead in that town. It's just incredible to think about. This became known as the killer smog of Denora. Why don't more people know about it today? Well, I'll tell you frankly, I didn't know about it at the time. The town was employed by the mill and the factories there, and so people couldn't dare think about the possibility that the same thing that kept them employed might also have affected their health. Denora, Pennsylvania led the decline of the Industrial Revolution in the 1950s when U.S. Steel turned off its blast furnaces in the borough and became the first major steel mill in the nation to close. And the sluggish U.S. economy today and Denora's shrinking population seem to have accelerated the borough's slope downward. The Ringgold School District in July closed the only public school left in the borough about a month before the Catholic Diocese of Pittsburgh shuttered the last Roman Catholic Church in the downtown. The local post office has consolidated some services into one in nearby Manesson, while the historic Denora Webster Bridge has been closed to traffic for two years and there is little hope it will reopen. Meanwhile, the Denora Historical Society is being sued in federal and state courts over damages caused two winters ago when its headquarters collapsed under the weight of a heavy snow. <laughs> 